Hello, everybody. Some comments have flooded in saying, would I do something about mixing? Absolutely. Here we are at the bar, got the booze, I'm ready to get started and show you my favourite cocktail. Now, what, what do you mean, not that type of mixing? What other kind of mixing is there? <sighs> mixing music. Oh. Really? Okay, let's do it. Just before we get started, I just wanted to make a couple of points. A lot of people think mixing and mastering uh, is the sort of magic sauce that can make uh, a mediocre piece of music absolutely incredible. Uh, there is no such thing as fixing it in the mix. And the best mixing you can do is a really great arrangement. So if you've written a wonderful track, then good mixing can make it absolutely incredible. If you've written a stinky track, as we all do from time to time, the mix is not going to help. So having got that out of the way, let's look at my way of going through this. A lot of the time, they're fairly basic, to be honest, because um, if you're working fast turning around television, you're not going to spend a huge amount of time mixing things out. We've got a very simple track here, which uh, we wrote a couple of weeks ago, um, and it's just drums, bass, uh, a little dulcimer thing, some strings and a soft piano, um, all from um, Spitfire Lab. So these are all free sounds which you could download now. Do you remember this one? Yeah, I quite like this one, so I thought, okay, this will be a good example. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all these original tracks down below here so that you can download them and have a go at the mix yourself. Um, so there's also um, a little um, quick guide to all the essential points about how to go about mixing your music. I'm not, as I say, a, a sort of a big sort of uh, mixing guru at all. I'm just, but I have a workflow and it sort of works. So that's what I'm sharing with you today. The first thing I do, as you see, is to level up all the MIDI tracks so they all start and finish at the same place. This helps a lot when you bounce them to audio. I personally far prefer um, mixing audio to MIDI. Um, there's a number of reasons for this, apart from anything else. If I want to come back to this track in a year's time, um, I might not have the same sounds, the same plugins installed on my system. And so if I've got audio, audio is always audio. So it really helps. Now, the first thing to do is to go through and listen to each track in, in turn to make sure there aren't any little mistakes in there which you haven't noticed because when you listen to them all together it's really easy to miss some really quite oh my lord mistakes and you have to be careful um that that doesn't you don't overlook that and in the big swirly thing that goes on with the mix you kind of miss the fact that there's a sort of uh, an f sharp against an f there and you go oh what what am i doing so listen through to each track you'll be surprised how many um, you know, creative <laughs> mistakes there are in there. So what we've got going on here is we've got obviously got a, a drum, and, uh, a bass kick and a snare, and I would prefer those on two separate tracks. Now, um, with this particular piece of software, I'm, uh, this particular program, I can't um, send them to separate outputs. So all I'm going to do is duplicate the MIDI and then delete uh, the kick from one and the snare from the other. Open up. Here we go and then bounce those separately to audio. So then um, I will then have, okay, let's get rid of these. So select all these boys and girls up the top there, that lot, goodbye. And now do the same in reverse with the other one. Uh, which one did I delete? That's right, should. So now I should have both of them Great, okay, super duper. Right, now let's start by mix. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to render in place each of these. Um, so firstly, you wanna make sure that the levels are right. And by right, I don't mean balanced against each other, but you've got a decent level coming out of the instrument. So that you've got a, um, so that you you're not going to have uh, an audio file which is overly quiet. So right, let's render these in place. There's number one, um, and that is the snare, isn't it? So let's label that snare. Uh, then we'll go and do the kick drum, which is that one there. So let's render that one in place. So all this is doing is creating an audio file. So now we've got an audio version of the. Mm. 
now we're going to do that with all the rest of the instruments one by one. So this is going to be fast passage of, sound, of time. Because the nice thing about this is you don't have to sit there and watch me do it. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so we've bounced all the or, um, MIDI files to audio. So these now you see why I um, try and extend the MIDI file so that they're all the same length. So it's nice and easy to import into your session. And these audio files here um, are available to you to mix and they, the link to that is underneath. So you just fill in the little form and we'll send you a guide to mixing and these audio files to have a go at. Right, let's first of all um, start looking at each of these sounds in turn. What I tend to do is I listen to each sound in turn and work out what I need to do to it and then get the whole thing going together as a mix. Um, so I'm listening to it both in context uh, and um, I'm then solo them out as well. Okay, let's have a listen to the um, drums. Right, this kick drum needs a little bit of compression, or most kick drums need compression. Um, compression is a very, uh, very, very useful thing. Uh, and let's, uh, here we go, let's get. Right, let's get a compressor up and I'll show you how it works. Oops, hang on, let's put the kick drum compressor dynamics. Ugh, what am I going to use? Okay, I'm going to use a very... I use a lot of Waves plugins. Um, but compressors really are going to be much the same. They're, okay, so what you have in terms of controls here, you have a threshold. Um, this is the... What a compressor does is it reduces the dynamic range of the uh, signal. So it makes the loudest bits get quieter and it sort of brings the whole thing together. But it has a, a, a much more profound effect than that in terms of the overall quality and colour of the sound. Right, the, most, the, the controls you have here are uh, the threshold and that is the, the, the point in the signal, how loud the signal has to get before the compressor has an effect. The ratio, how much you're going to reduce the dynamic range, and the attack and the release. The attack is how quickly the effect takes, um, and how and the release is how long it stays. Then you've got makeup gain, because what often happens, obviously, if you're going to reduce the dynamic range, particularly bringing the tops down, the whole thing gets quieter, so you need to turn the whole signal up, and that's what the makeup gain is there to do. So if we, first of all, if we run this, uh, and just cycle it round over that, that, period, that bit there. Right, here's the threshold. It's having no effect whatsoever up there. As you bring it down, hang on, let's turn the compressor up a bit. I'll turn it up super duper so you can see what's going on. Hang on, let's load classic compressor. There we go. So as you bring it down, no effect at all there. As soon as the threshold gets down into the signal area, you can see um, the gain reduction kicking in there. Now, you only want, I, we only want, we don't want really strong compression on this. We, this. we want, I don't know, four or five. And actually, I want a bit more attack. The thing with the attack is, the very beginning of a note is the most, in, in many respects, is the most important bit. It's called the transient, and it gives it a lot of character. If you have your attack really, really short so that the compression kicks in straight away, it's going to reduce the, um, that transient as well as everything else. And what actually one of the effects you might be looking for is to actually ease off on the uh, attack so that the uh, transient comes through and then you can bring down the rest of the, um, uh, the sound a bit. So let's just bring in... There you go. Can you hear that? How much more... whack we've got on the front of it. Do we want that? Okay, no point in listening to it in isolation. Right, now let's listen to the thing in context with the rest of the, uh, um, the arrangement. <laughs> The 
you can hear it's got a lot more thwack to it. Now you could EQ that as well, and um, you there's t if you EQ before or after, it has a slightly different effect on the sound. Um, I tend to compress and then EQ, but a lot of people do it the other way around. Uh, it doesn't really. Uh, the only there's no right or wrong with any of this. It's what your ears tell you is right or wrong. Uh, so I if it sounds good, it is good. No, I'm not going to EQ this actually. I'm going to leave it off. But what I am going to do is add some reverb. We've got two reverbs going on in here to choose from. There is this one, which is a big long one, which is an algorithmic one. Um, this is the lexicon um, um, native reverb, and uh, it sort of models the, those kind of classic reverbs like the 960 and the 480 and the 300 and stuff like that. And it has a, a really nice uh, long um, swooshy. It's more of an effect than a simulation of a room. Then I'm using spaces, which is a, um, a sampled reverb. So it is a, a, it's, a, it's a sample of a real room. So uh, they, they, they take a sort of profile of the real room, and then you can put your own sound through as though it's in that room. So I've chosen their small drum room because you what I'm looking for in here is I'm just looking for some um, a little bit of ambience. So let's, uh, as though, let's too much, too much. Actually, that's way too long. Let's find a shorter one. Uh, drum room, drum room, drum room. Uh, LA big drum rooms. Entrance, uh, drums, drums. I want a small. I want. Um, I want a much less. Um, gated drum. No, I don't want a gated drum room. I want something with less than one and a half seconds on. Uh, small drum room. Here we go. Let's go back to. Let's try that one. That's only got a second. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, that's not bad. I quite like that now. Uh, let's put some of the hat through as well, but leave the kick dry. Okay, good. Um, now let's listen to this uh, dulcimer thing because I think there's this. It's definitely going to need some reverb, but I think it needs something else. I'm quite. How about a little bit of delay? <laughs> and your main controls here are the length of time. And this is a dotted eighth note. Ping pong, so it's going left to right. And the blend, because this is in line. So I, this is on the channel. So I want to put the um, dry. Uh, dry means the original sound. Wet is all delay. So we're going to have a little bit. Feedback is important. That's how long, how many times it repeats and how long it lasts. Quite like that. Now we're going to um, send some of that to the uh, lexicon reverb. Ooh. Now we're definitely going to have some EQ going on in here.
Right, what am I going to use? Um, it doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm going to use um, Renaissance from from um, from Waves, which I which I like. Now the way EQ works, obviously, it can it can work in a number of different ways. Um, what you're doing is you're boosting or cutting frequencies uh, at specific parts, and you can have this particular EQ has four bands, um, but some of them have many, many more, and some of them have, have fewer. And the controls you have are you can choose the frequency itself, where it is, you can choose how much to, uh, to boost or cut, and most Im in many respects, most importantly, um, you can choose the shape of that. So you can make it very, very precise like that, or you can make it much, much more broad. Um, th these very precise ones uh, are very useful for getting rid of on unwanted frequencies. So, for example, if we just play this, as we scroll... Say we didn't like that particular frequency. What, th what the technique is, you make it as narrow as you can go, you boost it up until you've identified the frequency, and then instead of boosting, you cut it. Then you can just take out that frequency you don't want. It's, quite, it's, it's really useful. It's really useful, trust me. Uh, now with this one though, uh, what I actually want is I want to roll off any low frequencies which are, I'm not going to want in the... which may be hanging around. And I want a little bit of lift in the sort of upper mids. So I want a broad, much... bit of sparkle like that. Okay, I like that. Now let's listen to it in context. Right. Okay. Moving on. Um, we're gonna. We're, we're actually nearly there. So, how do you think it's going? It's going all right. I mean, it's. This is very simple. This is a really, really, really simple piece, really. And so all we're doing is exploring the basic principles. You could make this a great deal more complicated. Uh, and you can imagine if you're doing, you know, something, you know, trying to mix something like, you know, um, Hans Zimmer's Dark Knight or something, where you've got hundreds and hundreds of thousands and thousands of tracks, and it's all going whoosh, and you've got really, really complicated bottom end going on, um, that... You need somebody like, you know, Alan Myerson or somebody who's, like, ah, you know, this wizard-like person with faders everywhere. And it's all fantastic. Um, you know, this is just sort of me <laughs> doing the thing. But look, I, know, I hope you're getting the gist of what the little approach. Now, OK, so we got the drum. What, you ca what frequently you would do on a more busy track is you do something called side chaining, which is a way of allowing that kick to come through. And you use a compressor on the other tracks, which is triggered by the kick. So it goes every time the kick goes, boom, the rest go, ooh, and it just lets it speak through in this kind of lovely sort of clear way. But that is too complicated because this is a nice, simple little bit of music and I'm overcomplicating things already as per usual. Right. <sighs> Have I said enough about this? Right. What we need to do now. So we got the drums. We got the bass. We got the little dulcimery thing. What about this piano? There's not... Well, it's a, it's a nice sound. I'm not going to mess with it. You know, why make it more complicated than it needs to be? Sounds nice. Put it in the mix. Um, putting a bit of reverb on it. I wonder, I'm just going to try this. I wonder if, again, a little bit of subtle compression might help just lift it a little bit during the, um, let's see how this goes. Oh, no, 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 don't go into automation. might just lift those tails up a bit if I give it about two to one and a soft attack it's 
not very subtle, is it? Let's put it in the mix again. What do you think? I don't know. I'm not sure that's helping at all. Okay, I'm gonna leave it for now. Mm, jury's out. What about these strings? They're quite wide already. I was thinking, do they need any kind of um, uh, stereo, stereo ness? They can definitely do with a bit of reverb. And then I think we're going to be... Okay, look. We've been going long enough. I'm going to start doing uh, the actual mixy mixy bit. Because so far, we've been looking at all the ingredients. Have you noticed how we've actually avoided the whole thing of actually putting it together and making it sound fantastic? Now is the moment where that is going to happen. Um, so what I tend to, as I say, look, I, I am not a mix guru. I'm just showing you how I do it. Um, I start by mixing every, turning everything off and starting with my main event, which is my piano. Is it gonna come? Is it gonna come? Did I play the piano? Okay. And now I mix up. You need to be able to hear those hats so that you can hear it, the rhythm against the um, snare. Okay, that's nice. The gist of what's, what you're supposed to do when you mix, so notice that I say supposed to as opposed to what I'm actually really doing, is each instrument needs to find its little frequency niche. You know, it needs to have you know, somewhere to sit. And so you carve out little um, gaps in the mix where the dulcimer is going to sit. You carve out a gap in the mix where the snare is going to sit. So there's a clarity to it. So you can hear all these individual elements coming together in one wonderful Michelin three-star souffle. Well, that's what we're put creating here. No, we're not. We're doing a sort of... A really nice Big Mac. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Okay, well, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I think that compression works on the on the piano. Now, there's two ways of doing um, If you want to automate things, or if you want to change the volume over the course of time, um, because, for example, when the dulcimer comes in, we want a little bit more present, and then when it's caught the ear of the audience, you can pull it back a little bit, and they can still hear it, and then something else comes in. So what we want is that dulcimer to be a bit louder at the start and then get a bit softer as it goes on. What people do... Um, people... Yeah, a lot of people do. Um, is, for example, if you take this bit of uh, soft piano here, um, you can use what in Pro Tools is known as clip gain. In other words, you can turn that individual bit up and down. So you can go through and tweak it almost note by note. So if there's a note which stands out a little bit too much, you can just go, mm, I don't think that's quite right. I'm just going to pull that down a bit. And it's a very efficient way of sort of streamlining a track. Um, this... I could go through and do this, but I'm not going to. Um, the alternative way, um, which was, you know, is you use uh, right automation. Uh, you use automation. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm still not sure, actually. I want a bit more to play with, with the dulcimer. It's a bit on the 
the quiet side? Well, Dulcimer is quiet, guy. I know. Look, it's actually kind of, it's, it's really quiet. So I haven't got much to, let's turn it up a bit. Now it's going to be way, 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 way too loud. But I will be able to turn it down and then I've got some headroom. Let's see what happens. Okay, what we're going to do now, take the strings out, uh, we're going to automate this. So it's going to start a little bit louder. Now. You can still hear it, but it's not fighting with the piano. Go on, get your coat, come outside, I'll sort you out. Not that kind of fighting. There, do you notice that? Subtle. Moi, subtle. Okay, good. Right. That's number one. Now we're going to do the same thing with the strings because the strings need to start quite subtle. Ooh. Wah! Hang on. Pay attention, guy. So you, they're there, supporting, but it's only about two thirds of the way through that we really want them to start going, oh. Ready, and. Yeah. And. Suspension, resolution. Little push at the end. For it is done. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he puts on the sunglasses of doubt. No, I cast them off. We're going to listen to this. And I'm going to listen on my um, uh, open back headphones to check that I haven't made a complete pig's ear of this. <sighs> Okay, either these are too loud or I think that dulcimer does come in a bit hot. That's better. this tune I like this tune you could rap over this that's it'd be quite nice not with those drums though it needs somebody a bit more ass kicking look <sighs> that's all that's all I got for you um, and uh, I hope you found it useful um, I think pr probably those of you who'd sort of struggle a bit with the old uh, mixing thing. I hope you've got the, the broad workflow. There is so much more to it than this. And I'm really not very good at this. I mean, this isn't my big thing. And the important thing with mixing, and one of the best things about mixing with the likes of the sort of gurus like Jake Jackson, is he'll come and listen to your music afresh. So what you're getting is four ears, not two. And uh, you get a completely new approach to the, your music and everything else. And so they're going to pull out elements of the music uh, in a creative way, which you never quite thought of that way. So, you know, what you don't get when you mix your own thing is objectivity. Uh, and, um, but nonetheless, I think it sounds a bit cleaner than it did when we started. <laughs> but bear in mind, all these audio files um, and a really great... Uh, 
little um, guide to getting started with mixing written by Tim Johnson, who is our course manager. And he is a real, he is a genuine mix guru. He really does know what he's doing. And um, were it not for this uh, COVID crisis, we would have done this uh, video together. But nonetheless, um, read his, uh, his guide because it's really great. Download these tracks and have a go yourself. And don't forget to come back and see us again very soon. Cheerio.